Hi, my name is Yasmin and I will be leading you through this video about understanding the changes to Google product search for feeds targeting the US. Please note that this video highlights the specifications that apply to feeds targeting only the US. If you submit feeds targeting the UK or Germany, refer to respective videos for these locations. For all other target countries, please refer to the Help Center. This video is part of a freefold learning path. Understanding changes to Google product search is the first part of this learning series, followed by a video on how to provide high-quality data and a video on troubleshooting tools. We'll go through why we are introducing changes, followed by an overview of the actual changes. We also explain what happens if you don't comply and how you will be alerted of this. So why are we introducing new data feed requirements and policies? This year, nearly 179 million consumers will research products online. Some 83% of them will make an online purchase. We from Google Product Search want to ensure that shoppers are getting the rich detailed information they're looking for. And this has great implications for you, our merchants as we want to deliver even more valuable and qualified traffic to you. To meet these goals, we're asking merchants to provide richer product data and are introducing new policies. So what's actually changing? We have five new attributes plus some more SAP attributes that will be required. These are product images specifying product availability, the new Google product category, five new apparel attributes, and product variants. As previously announced, shipping and tax will also become required. We will begin enforcing these changes starting September 22nd. Now, let's review these newly required attributes. You now have to submit at least one image link per item you submit. Images have to be of high quality. For apparel, we require a minimum of 250 times 250 pixels. However, we do recommend images of 400 times 400 pixels. You now can also submit more images using the additional image link attribute. Submit full-size images for your products and don't submit thumbnail versions or versions with a water sign or the like. If you have no image for your item, don't submit it. Item availability is a really important and critical attribute as it ties into our new policy in regards to the freshness of your data. The availability of your items can change quite frequently and you need to make sure Google is notified of these changes as they happen. We will regularly check these attributes and if the values provided do not match the data you submit in your feed, your account may be suspended. So, for availability, we have four predefined values, and you have to submit one of the four values for every item you submit. An important note, the quantity attribute, which lets you specify out-of-stock items, will be retired. From now on, please use the availability attribute to specify any out-of-stock items. The Google product category attribute is a completely new attribute. This attribute contains the category of the product according to Google's product taxonomy. You have to use this attribute to categorize products falling under the categories apparel and accessories, media, and software. You submit only one value per item. For all items falling under the outline categories, it is required to submit only one of these seven values per each item. These are the very minimum values according to our taxonomy that you need to submit. Recommended, however, is to submit the fuller path of your categories, meaning the most granular value according to our taxonomy. You may wonder what is the taxonomy and how to navigate it. The Google product taxonomy is a tree of categories that classifies product families. At the highest level, it is arranged into a few verticals, which refer to broad categories of products. The children of these broad product families are more specific 
product categories or more specific products that fall under the high level vertical. So basically it works like a drill down as in this category encompasses the smaller set. You can browse the taxonomy by expanding the trees with these little buttons. Clicking on a label will place its full name into the box so that it can be copied and pasted. You can also download the taxonomy in a spreadsheet. The new Google product category and the already existing product type both serve to categorize and classify your products using Google's taxonomy. Google product category is Google's categorization of the item. Product type instead is your categorization of the item. Product category is required and has to use only one of the seven predefined category values per item. Product type is not required but strongly recommended. Product type enables you to categorize your item using your own values or by extending the taxonomy according to your own taste and understanding. You can submit up to 10 values per item. So basically make sure to use the product category attribute if you sell items falling under outline categories. In addition and for all other categories use the product type attribute and apply values freely as you wish. You may wonder why the merchant needs both. The short answer is it will help us more accurately and consistently understand an item's product category, which will help us determine which attributes apply to that category. Let's move on to apparel. Many of you provided the feedback that it can be challenging to display and describe your apparel items the way you would like to, and we listened. It is now possible to display your apparel items using five additional attributes. Here again we apply the taxonomy and the so-called breadcrumb approach. For all apparel products, irrespective of their child or subcategory, you need to supply the brand, unless the item is custom made, along with the attributes age group, gender, and color. For shoes and clothing, you should additionally submit data about size so the client knows which size this item is available in. For age group and gender, you need to use Google's predefined values. For color and size, you can provide your own specification, freely as you wish. So what do you do if your item is available in several sizes? Well, many merchants have given us the feedback in the past that there was no ideal way to handle such cases also because of our policy in regards to not submit duplicate items. And we've heard you, and therefore introduced the newly required product variance attribute. So we all know that one item can vary. For apparel, we therefore now require you to submit information on variance. We have identified the most common values of variations, which you now can specify using the following attributes if your item varies by any combination of color, size, material, or pattern. Products can vary by any number of variants. Size and color are the most obvious. Note that you only need to send us data for variant attributes if your product varies by that specific attribute. That means if your product varies only by color and size, Obviously, submit only these two attributes. In this case, you don't have to submit information for material and pattern. As mentioned, products can vary by any combination and any number of variant attributes. In addition to specify these attributes, you have to combine the variant combinations for apparel under one item group ID. So basically, instead of one item, you are submitting several items, which are all variations of this one item. For us to understand that these are all variations of the same item, you need to submit the same item group ID for all of these variations. Important is also that every apparel variant combination must have a separate image. You submit this via the image link. Providing variance is only required for apparel but not limited to it. 
you can provide variants for other products as well. Just think about how nowadays digital cameras or notebooks often come in different colors from pink to blue. For variants of products other than apparel and its subcategories, you don't need to submit a separate image or item group ID. Let's give you an example using apparel. One of the categories where using variants would be most common. You have one apparel item, red high heels. You do have different variants of this item, so you do submit each variant as a single item. As a reminder for us to understand that this is not a simple apparel product, but in fact a variant of one and the same apparel product, you have to create an item group ID under which you combine all the variants of one item. This will enable us to display your apparel items in a new way. So, variant items 1 to 3 share the same item group ID. For each variant, you now provide the variant attributes. The shoes are all red, so we submit red as a color variant. They do come in two sizes though, in 5 and 6. In size 5, since this is a very popular size, the merchant offers the shoe in two different materials. If you wear a size 5, you can purchase the shoe in leather or faux leather. The pattern for both materials is suede. Don't forget, you need to submit an additional image link for each variant item you submit, if it makes sense. In our example, variant items 1 and 3 only differ in size. For different sizes, obviously, you don't need to submit different images as we wouldn't be able to see the difference in a picture. For variant item 2, also it is possible to submit different prices for each item. And one more example. As said, you have to submit one item per variant combination. Let's say this bag comes in three colors and two sizes. Meaning, you have to submit one item for every single combination. Travel size in brown, shopper size in brown, and so on. You simply multiply this and easily see that you have to submit six variants of this item. Let's quickly recap. You see here a snapshot of the new feed specifications. There is the basic product information which consists of nine attributes including our new product category attribute. Then we have availability and price which are highly critical in regards to our new policy which I outline in just a minute. There are, of course, unique IDs which you all should be submitting by now. We have five new apparel attributes and additional attributes to describe different variants of the same product. You have to provide accurate data on tax and shipping. You might wonder how to implement all these attributes into your real feed. So let's look at this example. All start attributes are required. Providing information on title description link ID and condition works as usual. Then there is price, the new availability attribute, image link which is required now, shipping and tax is also required. We provide all three values for unique product identifiers. Only two are required, but the more data we submit the easier Google can match our products to the according product pages. We are submitting both Google product category and product type. You see Google product category shows the most granular value I could find for the item in our taxonomy. Product type uses the merchant's very own categorization. In the next line I provide data on apparel and you see this is a variant item with an item group ID. Lastly, I am also providing the sale price. You see of all of these attributes only the last three are not required and optional. The attributes with our shopping logo are the new or newly required ones. We are not just making changes to our feedback requirements, we are also introducing new policies. As you just learned, we require more data now and have an increased focus on data quality. Your data in your feed therefore has to match the data on your landing page. That means your account will be suspended from product search if some required attributes aren't present in your feed and or your product data doesn't match the data on your landing pages. Let's look at an example. 
you may wonder that not all the data you submit in your feed will be visible on your landing page and it actually doesn't have to we will have our checks in place to make sure all data that you submit is accurate so what means data in feed must match data on landing page in this example we provide following data in our feed the landing page of our item looks like the following you see the usual data that is present on most landing pages price availability shipping costs and it becomes clear that the item is new this data has at all times to be the same as in the feed we also require you to submit the right prices new is that the price in your feed has to be the most prominent price on your landing page what means most prominent if you have several prices on your landing page make sure that the price you also submit in your feed is highlighted on your landing page for example in red or bolded so it is the most prominent one basically you need to ensure that the most prominent price on your page is the price you submit in your feed and that this is the price that every customer who finds your site via product search would pay in the end considering the new data freshness requirement if you have to how can you submit data more than once daily you can submit feeds via FTP by manually uploading them in your account or by writing a simple script to push the fee to the merchant center simultaneously while updating your product data on your website you can also use the content API for shopping with which you programmatically manage your product data real-time you can find extensive information on these two options in the Help Center. We strictly enforce these requirements starting September 22nd. After the first violation, your account will be suspended until it complies with our policies. After the second violation, your account will be suspended for at least one week. And after the third violation, the account is suspended for at least one month. More about how the suspension cycle works in just a minute how will you be alerted when you don't comply one week before a potential suspension you will see an error message on the dashboard tab you also receive a warning email to your accounts technical contact email address so make sure this is updated under settings general then you'll have one week to resolve the issue and avoid suspension at this point, there is no need to alert Google of changes to trigger a re-evaluation. So imagine your account has been suspended. You see the alert under your dashboard and now have fixed the issue. You then navigate to the Merchant Center Accounts Data Quality tab and click on the I Fix All Issues button. This will notify us here at Google and we can re-evaluate the account. Let's recap. Your products are live on product search. If there is a critical error, there will be a 7-day warning period during which your products will still be live in product search. If you fix the errors within 7 days, you go back to normal. If the critical errors are not fixed, then your products are suspended on product search. The first time they are suspended until you fix them. The second time they are suspended until you fix them plus a seven-day penalty period and the third time around the penalty period raises up to 30 days obviously if your errors are fixed you go back to normal again let's finish off with a few recommendations you've learned that the data quality tab is crucial to identify possible issues check this tab every time you log on to your merchant center account Subscribe to our commerce blog to stay on top of all announcements, tips and tricks in the world of commerce. Use a valid technical contact address, as this is the address where we alert you of any issues. And of course, the Help Center is our most important resource where you can find all the info you need. For a comprehensive overview of these changes, please check out these useful links. Now, let's continue with the second part of the learning path providing high-quality data.